Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 238, recorded March 2nd, 2015, covering Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, day one. This Twit Live Special of Mobile World Congress 2015 is brought to you by FreshBooks, the easy to use invoicing software designed to help small business owners save time billing and get paid faster. Join over 5 million users running their business with ease. Try it free at freshbooks.com slash twit. This is Mike Elgin at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Spain. Uh, we're at the big, big show, the biggest mobile show in the world, and we're at the ZTE booth. ZTE is a big, big brand in China, very, uh, very unknown in the United States and Europe and elsewhere because they uh, have been focusing their attentions on... Uh, the Chinese market, and they're just a big up-and-coming powerhouse there. And so uh, they're going to be coming to the United States and Europe and elsewhere in uh, later this year, maybe next year, but they're coming one way or the other. So let's take a look at one of these phones that you may not have ever seen before. This is the ZTE Blade 6 Plus right here. And this, of course, is an Android 5.0 phone. Uh, it's an LTE phone with 13-megapixel camera. Camera has autofocus, LED flash. It's a, it's a good, reasonable middle, middle to high-end phone. Uh, not too bad. Um, it's a it's a nice looking phone. Looks like a cross between a Samsung and an iPhone. And um, there it is, the ZTE Blade 6 Plus. Here we have the ZTE 10T. This has uh, got a, a, a Qualcomm quad core uh, processor. You know, pretty decent specs. Uh, two megapixel and five megapixel cameras, so the camera is not so great. Pretty good battery. Uh, but this is again, this is a tablet that you probably haven't seen anywhere. All right, so this is the ZTE booth. Let's see if we can uh, visit Samsung. Let's go across this way. So you can see ahead of us is the Samsung booth. Of course, we saw their big announcement yesterday, the Samsung Galaxy S6 and also the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. Okay, let's, let's admit it. The, the Galaxy S6 Edge is clearly the star, at least in my opinion, clearly the star of this show. What did you think of it? I think it's a direction that Samsung needed to take. I think that they had been criticized pretty heavily with the S5 for kind of keeping the same design language that they had with the S4. It was plasticky. There wasn't a whole lot new to it. Uh, I think that you know they obviously introduced with the uh, Note Edge last fall this concept of sort of the overflow screen or the side screen for different apps. Now they're bringing that you know on both sides of the Note Edge. So, uh, you know, it's something new for Samsung. It's a direction that they needed to go. I think the metal bodies um, and the overall design language should help set them apart. Uh, but the Note Edge, or the S6 Edge rather, um, you know, definitely is uh, the standout for sure. They got a little bit of applause for some of the things that you can put on the edge of the phone. I'm sure there'll be lots and lots of things you can do with that. But for example, you can put your favorite people on the edge. You can get caller ID notifications and stuff like that on the, on the edge of the phone without touching it. Uh, they also had another uh, feature, which is you put your finger on the heart rate sensor to send an auto reply. So if somebody sends you a, a message, you can already have queued up the idea that, oh, I'm in a meeting, can't talk right now. And just by touching the, the, heart, the heart rate sensor, off it goes and you don't even have to it, turn the phone on really. Is that, does that strike you as a kind of a gimmick or is that something that people are really going to use in any significant way? I think that some people will find it very useful. Um, you know, I think that some of the practical technology things that they talked about are actually going to be really useful for everybody. The ability to get four hours of charging or four hours of battery life with only 10 minutes of charging, that's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, not many phones today can offer something like that. They did, you know, go away from having a removable battery, but they're basically saying our battery life is going to be so impressive that you're not going to need to have a removable battery because you're not going to need a second battery. Um, so those are kind of the practical things that I think are great. And then some of the things that they talked about with the camera of having all of the controls right there, uh, the optical image stabilization, um, the, the camera technologies that they talked about are also going to be impressive. A lot of people care about their phone's camera and their phone's battery. Um, and I think that Samsung with these two phones definitely made improvements on both of those fronts. It seemed to me that the fact that they had wireless charging built in that supported both WPC and WM, uh, and PMA is is was pretty impressive. Is that are are there other phones that do that? 
As far as I know, no. Uh, there are a lot of phones that support uh, the WPC, which is the Qi um, charging standard. There are some phones that support PMA. I don't believe, I could be wrong, but I don't believe that at this time there is a phone on the market that supports both. Um, so Samsung is basically trying to cover all their bases from a wireless charging standpoint because at this point it's not 100% clear how it's going to shake out in terms of the different standards. So they're basically saying, we don't care, we support both. And they've been a member of all of the wireless charging organizations for a while now, so it makes sense that they would do that. Now, I think that the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus cameras are really amazing cameras. They took a direct, you know, the only other company they mentioned in this was Apple, and well, they didn't mention Apple, but they mentioned the iPhone, uh, specifically around the camera, and had a demo that demonstrated that uh, that, that low, le low, le low light level uh, photography and video is superior on the Galaxy S6 and Galaxy S6 Edge. Uh, if that's in fact true, don't you think that will be uh, pretty much of a, a game changer in terms of who has the better camera, which of course is a huge thing? It definitely could be. Uh, you know, I think it's going to have to be borne out in what people's actual experiences are like with the different devices, but from the demos that they showed, it seems like the new Samsung phones have superior low light photography, like you said, uh, and that's a big deal for a lot of people. Uh, if you're out at night, if you're in a dark uh, you know, club or wherever, uh, you want to have really good photography. Um, and you know, that is sometimes what can tip the balance in terms of somebody buying one phone over another. So this is some interesting news. Two watches, one called the LG Urbane, which runs Android Wear, and another watch called the LG Urbane Smartwatch LTE which runs, we're hearing, that runs WebOS, uh, but we definitely does not run Android Wear. This has a 1.3 inch P OLED display, polished silver or gold steel casing, stitched leather strap, 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon, uh, 400 megs of RAM, four gigs of internal storage, heart rate and pulse monitor. And this is kind of the talk of the show because there was a rumor that they were coming out with an Android Wear and everybody thought it would be similar to the LG G Watch, uh, the LG G Watch R for round, uh, and assuming it was Android Wear, but in fact, they came out with another one that is not Android Wear. So there it is, the LG Urbane Watch. This is the Android Wear version. Can you tell us about the M9? Yeah, sure. So the M9 um, has a beautiful design. We've designed it so it's almost like a beautiful piece of jewellery. So you wear it every day and you wear it with pride. We have the gunmetal grey at the minute uh, with the brushed hairline effect and then smoothed off around the edges. So one of the main things that we have added as well is uh, HTC Sense 7. What this has done here is bought a beautiful little box. What this does is track where you are and then change your apps accordingly. So we have home, we have out and we have work. Those apps will give you suggestions down here as to what you use the most and pop them into your screen. That, that's cool. This is a, so it's a context aware set of apps that it learns, I imagine, uh, as you use apps, it sees that when you're home you tend to use this app and so on. Yeah, so it learns that by GPS signal. So all you have to do is click on here, then click onto the menu button. If you set a location, you can choose where, what location you want where. So at each location, it will learn from yourself what you use the most. Suggest them if you want to suggest. If you want the suggested apps, all you have to do: click on it, hold it down, and drag it into the front screen. Nice. Okay. So, can you tell us a bit about the uh, the new camera setups, okay. front and back? Yeah, sure. So in the new camera setups, what we've done is added a 20 megapixel camera to the back. The reason we've done that is because we were listening to consumers and they wanted megapixels, so we did exactly that. But a lot of them did like um, our ultrapixel camera, which we have just relocated to the front. Now, is that exactly the same camera that used to be on the back and it's now on the front? Yeah. It, obviously, the aperture is slightly different, but we have moved the camera to the front. And it's optimized for selfies, obviously. Exactly. So um, we, it brings in 300% more light. And obviously, with a front-facing camera, that's kind of what we want. <laughs> OK, and how about the sound system? I know that uh, HTC, uh, the HTC One line has always been kind of famous for its front-facing speakers and good sound. So uh, has that been improved in this model? It has indeed, yeah. So it's been improved by we've paired it with Dolby. So we now have uh, Dolby enables in our speakers. So when listening to films or to music, we are able to change whether it be um, uh, whether it be just for music or whether it be for a movie. So that way you get the surround sound feel 
to your music or even to your movies. Now, if somebody is a current user of the current uh, HTC One, uh, will they want to upgrade to this, or, or is this uh, just a, a, an incremental upgrade from the, the old version? Uh, what would you recommend to those people? I would recommend to uh, upgrade to the M9 any day because you're getting that little bit more experience, you're getting that little bit more wow factor, and just the overall finish as well as what's happening on in the inside is just absolutely amazing. Any other, uh, any other new features that you want to talk about today? Um, off the top of my head, no, I think we're good. Other than we've got Lollipop running. So Lollipop is obviously bright, colourful, and fantastic. And um, one other thing, actually, is the themes. I don't know if you've if you listened to, have you heard about the themes? Uh, yes, but why don't you uh, tell us about those? Awesome. Right. So themes is uh, now an app. What it does is it actually gives you like a store as such, but they are all free. So you can choose any of these themes, and what it does is changes everything within the phone. Okay, so it changes your front screen as well as your ringtones as well as your widgets. You can go into those and edit them yourself, or as we've got this backdrop here, you can take pictures and you can do live um, live themes of your own. Okay, so if I show you, so this shows you exactly what it will look like. Okay, and you can download that and pop it straight onto your front screen. We're talking to Marquez as uh, one of the premier reviewers of smartphones about the new M9. So overall, what did you think of this phone? Uh, it was impressive. I, I knew a lot of what to expect. Obviously, we've seen really impressive stuff from the One M7 and M8. Uh, so the biggest change is the camera. So I'm really excited to get my hands on it, see what the photos look like, see what the videos look like. But the design, the speakers, everything is also really impressive already. So the weird thing about the camera was they put the ultra pixel on the front facing camera and they put a 20 megapixel camera on the back. What do you think about that? Why did they do that? Why didn't they keep mega, uh, ultra pixel in the back and why did they move it to the front? Yeah, I think they, they want to emphasize the fact that you can take low light shots and wide angle shots and selfies are just kind of like a spur of the moment thing. I see selfies all around here and the lighting's terrible. Mm -hmm. So that's what ultra pixel is supposed to be good for. Hopefully it'll work well there. But I think the back facing camera, you want a little bit more versatility. So hopefully the 20 megapixels will bring that and better low light shots and everything else. The HTC One has always been famous for its speakers. It has front facing speakers and great sound. Now they added Dolby. Do you think this is a significant improvement or is this just a slight incremental improvement? I think it's nice to bring a name on board that wants to be associated with it, but I don't know if it's going to make a big difference. I've heard awesome audio out of the One M8 speakers. so. I'll have to hear it for myself, but I think it'll be really good as usual. And and of course, the uh, the big uh, controversy of this, I think, when we heard the rumors, and I think most or all of the rumors are pretty much true, uh, was that it would be incremental. Would this be a you know they kind of needed to hit one out of the park, do something really uh, you know off the wall, and this is pretty much just a slightly better version of the old phone. Do you think that's going to hurt them, or is that is that the way to go? I think a lot of what people expect when they say big change is a new design. So even if they change nothing about it and just change the internal specs, they would say, oh, it's an incremental improvement. So I think they have a good design going for them. I think it's good that they kept it. Is it incremental? Yeah, I guess, but I don't have any problems with it. Can you tell us about the HTC Grip? Yes, so it's a sports band that's designed to take people that are heavily athletic up to the next level. So they can utilize all the uh, assets from UA Record, which is the uh, new application for Armandurano, a partnership with the band, to actually review the data that they've collected from their workouts, from their runs, from their cycles, etc. like that, and actually make that decision of what worked. Did I uh, have a great meal the night before? Did I have that good coach and control? And, and actually with the UA records, you have access to all those athletes that Under Armour have uh, uh, under their branding as well. So it's a really way of, of getting the most out of uh, your exercise. It appears to be a co-branded uh, device. Are they going to, is Under Armour going to sell it themselves in their own channels? So at the moment it's, uh, it's going to be launched in America and we're about to announce the uh, distribution for the America, but we actually aren't announcing anything else other than it is a co-branded device and, and it's, it's planned uh, uh, use and for, for those athletes. Now you're claiming a high accuracy. How are you achieving that? So with the high accuracy, it is something that is, is two modes. Obviously you have the ability with the five cent different sensors to, to track your, your, your walking, your steps, etc. like that. But the reason it's incredibly high accuracy is if you say, for example, choose a run, it will turn on the GPS that's integrated into that band mm -hmm. to track every precise location of your run. So that's why it's much more high accuracy than, uh, than a normal fitness band. In terms of the band itself, it's a, a really great screen in terms of it ha has a, a technology, it's called P AMOLED and it's, it's really uh, crisp and, and detailed and able to be 
be seen on, on most angles. So it is a beautiful screen. We're not actually showing it working here. We're still actually in that, that development stage. We didn't want people to uh, to have that experience. But it, it's, a, it's a solid band uh, that uh, links around and comes in three different sizes, small, medium, large, and multiple colors, as, as you're seeing the main color in the, uh, in the box there. Now, you're using both G GPS and a pedometer. And with the GPS on, you have one battery metric. And with it off, you have another one. Can you talk about that? So the, the first battery metric, obviously, with general use every day, it's, uh, it's a couple of days, two to three days. That's what we'd expect people to get out of it. When you turn on GPS, that's obviously a much higher consuming activity. And we expect about a five hour battery life with the, uh, with the GPS turned on on the device. Price and availability? I'm afraid it's something that we're uh, we're announced nearer the time. It's, it will be rolling out uh, in America first, where obviously the Under Armour, it, Under Armour is one of the go-to brands, and then we're going to establish that and, and, and look at that for the rest of the world. We're going to talk about one of our sponsors now, right here in the middle of the floor on, at Mobile World Congress. We're going to talk about FreshBooks. I'm a huge Fre FreshBooks user, been using it for a long time. I also uh, write a lot, write a lot of columns and have multiple clients and deal with all of them through FreshBooks and they love it that I use FreshBooks because what they get from me, I choose the option to send via email. They get an email with an attachment with a beautifully formatted uh, invoice for my work, right? You want to invoice the companies that you work with and uh, they love it because it's so clear, it's so, you know, every, all the details that they need uh, to process the payments are right there. As far as I'm concerned, I didn't have to do any of that because FreshBooks does it all for me. I simply put in the what it is that I wrote, what the amount was, it adds it up for me, and I click a button. I basically choose the company from a, a drop-down menu that I've set up in advance. I choose the amount that uh, that I'm charging them for, for my work, and, uh, and off it goes. And it's super easy for me, and I have a detailed record of every single invoice I've ever done. It automatically chooses the invoice number. It knows my address. It knows their address. It takes care of all of the annoying parts of invoicing. I can invo I can do an invoice in literally like 15 or 20 seconds. And so that's why I love it. Of course, they love it as well. Try FreshBooks free with no obligation. To start your 30-day free trial, go to freshbooks.com slash twit. Don't forget the slash twit part. And, uh, and you'll enter the This Week in Tech in the how did you hear about us section. Just go in there and enter that because uh, we want to tell them how you heard about FreshBooks. You heard it from me here from Spain. We're talking to Bill Connor, the CEO and president of Silent Circle today. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time today. Great to be here, Mike. Thanks for having me. Now you announced the BlackPhone 2, the second version of your BlackPhone hardware, you know, smart phone device, and it looks to me like a, a nice, reasonable, what you might expect upgrade, uh, an improvement over the other one. You said it's the same price, $629, that's unlocked. That's right. 5.5-inch uh, screen and you're holding it there. right here. Um, uh, you can see Gorilla Glass, uh, really nice form factor, not too big, not too small. Uh, allows you to now take advances in that OS to get you know, meetings and spaces and create a private space and a public space, so kind of virtual phones within a phone. Now, I was really stunned when you announced your other product, which is the Black Phone Plus. This is a 7-inch tablet, but this is actually a phone, isn't it? That's right. That's, it's kind of interesting because other people that call Plus is just a larger format phone. What we looked at, and as I looked at it, I said, and that's why we're testing it now in the market, is it's a collision of the tablet world and the smartphone. And in my world, it's the smartphone, but it's a tablet. So it's a collision of that. So it's going to have all the computing power of tablets, but in the form factor of a 7-inch screen, Gorilla Glass, so I can do stuff like take on the tele, you know, teleconferencing industry, $20 billion industry, and do drag and drop with secure phones. So no more pins, no more who's on, who's not on, all the kinds of things that executives like me and you that travel a lot want to live off of. So you guys are, uh, you have the hardware, you have the operating system, you have the software, and you have the services. So let's talk a little bit more about the, the software part of it. Um, can you tell us about Spaces? Yeah, Silent Spaces is really, I, I think of it as virtual, virtualization of your phone in a secure way. BYOD was the ushering in of people bringing the private space to work. And the enterprise then going, well, we'll let you do that. It's reducing our capital. But the only way they could manage that was through MDM, which is fine. Uh, we're going to work with them. But you really need a fine-grained access control. And what Sony showed us is all of a sudden when those BYOD devices are there, 
my personal information is exposed just like the enterprises was. So Spacious is the kind of next generation and secure virtual world that you can create multiple private images of your phone environment in software on a phone. Okay, how about the Silent Suite? Tell us about that. Yeah, Silent Suite is really trying to get at how we package capabilities from secure phone to secure text to secure contacts. And, and as we said, uh, our Silent Store is going to be privacy-led applications for the enterprise or the BYD consumer, if you will, uh, that's going to be privacy first, uh, going where no one's been, that then you can load into your virtual space, it's be it your workspace or your private space. Now, you also, uh, you and, and some of your colleagues uh, talked a bit about the what's happening with the company. You seem to be surprised by your own success to a certain extent. And can, can you talk about, uh, the, just briefly, the journey you've gone through since launching to where you are now in terms of who your customers are and that sort of thing? Yeah, the three co-founders, uh, Mike Janke, uh, now the current chair, executive chairman, Phil Zimmerman, you know, Hall of Fame cryptographer, John Cowes, both of them were co-founders in PGP as well. You know, in two years, they've gone to three quarters of a billion on orders in hardware and software. That's nothing, I mean, we call it stage one for a run. That's taking it to the outer atmosphere. Uh, what I'm just trying to do, I could have never done that. I give them huge credit. I've known them in the security space forever. I get the benefit now of taking stage one and launching stage two, which is really around this next stage to keep going where no one's gone before uh, around privacy and security because, you know, People might want uh, a water-resistant phone or a metal cover, but most of the enterprise and BYOD people I talk to go, boy, if you can give me something I can believe in that's secure and private, that's a feature I want, and that's where we're going with us. So Huawei is another Chinese powerhouse that we're going to be seeing a lot of their devices in the United States market uh, pretty soon. This is the Huawei G7 we're looking at here. And they, you know, these are really nice looking phones. They serve, again, they remind you as many of these phones do as a cross between Samsung and iPhones. Uh, but the great thing about these Chinese uh, phones like Huawei and ZTE and others is that they provide pretty premium phones at very low prices. And in fact, Xiaomi uh, even claims that they are not even a phone company. They don't make any money on the phones. They claim to be an internet company, but here Huawei is trying to make money. Of course, Apple is making 93% of the profits, at least in the fourth quarter of 2014. Uh, but Huawei considers, uh, you know, Samsung and Apple, of course, the big targets. So does ZTE. And uh, this, this Huawei booth, by the way, is where they're showcasing a lot of the devices. So let's go around and see if we can look at some more of the phones here. So this is a device called the, the Honor Holly. This is a five, five inch uh, display, pretty reasonable specs, eight megapixel camera, running Android 4.4, so a little behind the curve there, one gigabyte of RAM. So this is gonna be, no doubt, a very low, low cost phone. So this is Talkband B2. It's, a, it's got a Bluetooth earphone and dual mic for uh, noise suppression, which you need in an environment like this. It's a, you know, it does what a lot of the uh, fitness type bands do. It, it uh, me measures your activity for running, cycling, mountain, mountain hiking, and so on. Uh, they have sleep tracking, so while you're sleeping, it's paying attention to how you're sleeping. It's got a touch screen on it, which I don't think it's turned on on this particular device. Uh, six hours of talk time, 12 days of standby time, and it's uh, water and dust resistant. And you, you know, you can, you can use it with both an Android and an iOS device. Pretty standard, we're seeing the kind of genericization and uh, commoditization of these kinds of fitness bands. Everybody's got them. And uh, hopefully the prices will come down as a result, but they're really not a lot that's distinguishing these uh, devices. The real uh, distinguishing features are gonna be from, you know, the higher end uh, watch type things rather than fitness band type devices. What is Acer uh, showing here today in terms of Android phones? Android phone. Uh, Acer is launching three Android phones today. And these are all being announced today. Yeah. And, and what, what are the differences between these three devices? Uh, they are basic, medium, and premium class. And so let's uh, talk about the premium one. Uh, what, what are some of the benefits of this phone? Well, the, it has so many benefits. Uh, starting, it's a 4G phone below 200 euros. That's pretty much the selling point of it. And it works with a quad-core, 1.5 gigs of quad-core at 64 bits. 
Okay, and let's let's talk about uh, the the liquid uh, Z220 is the is the least expensive of the three. Can you talk about that one? Okay, it's 79 euros. Uh, it works with eight gigs of ROM, one gig of RAM. It has a four-inch device. A uh, 5 mega megapixels back camera with autofocus, a 2 megapixels front camera, that, which are pretty good for this range of price. It, wo it works on Lollipop, it's the only one that, that actually works on Lollipop, the rest of them are in KitKat. And well, it has the quick mode, for example, that it's for... T this phone is really useful for people who are starting to use smartphones, like your granny or uh, children or for a first ma smartphone. So somebody's user. transitioning from a feature phone to a smartphone, this could be a good yeah. first smartphone. And for example, for kids, if you have kids, you have the quick mode, which ha can be basic, uh, standard or easy. And you can decide exactly which content you want on it and you can lock the kit in it that, and can exit without the password. This is called Liquid Lip Plus. It's the next version of the previously existing Liquid Lip. And it's, well, mainly for fitness. It, it has a one inch device and it, uh, it can, it, it sets the time. It has a step counter. It has a, it doesn't have a GPS, but it has an accelerometer. It uses the GPS on the phone. And it is waterproof. Uh, EP, EPX7, that in category 7, that it's like, it means that it can be one meter underwater for 30 minutes, more or less. Uh, it has, yeah, it, it tracks the sleep cycles as well. It counts how many hours you have sleep, slept, and it, it warns you and it vibrates on notifications. You can, you can receive calls, uh, SMS, and it will show you actually the text. And uh, what about price and availability? Uh, it's uh, releasing on April and it's 79 euros. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, oh, so and one. yeah, it is OS agnostic. It doesn't have to be connected to an Acer device or an Android device. It can be connected to iOS or Windows Phone. Okay.